Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. Today, you ever do something that to you is totally normal, but your friend tells you that he is very worried about you? Yeah, no one told Krill what sleep was, and he got a little worried. Seriously, this one was super fun to read. I hope you really enjoy it. Also, check if you're subscribed today, because if you're not, do it. It is totally free. But now, let's get into the story. From the Intergalactic Journal of Mechanics and Biology. The human cortical system is a marvel of biological engineering. It has multiple backup systems with feed-forward and feedback processes. Damage the brain, and instead of death, you may simply damage only one area of functioning. In some cases, damage does not remain so long as other parts of the brain are repurposed to fill the role of the damaged cortical tissue. Humans had been under the impression for the longest time that their ability to regenerate neurons in the CNS was lacking. However, in comparison to other species with similar cortical structures, this ability is astonishing. Humans are the only species known to be able to survive damage to the cortical tissue. However, there is one great issue with the human brain, and that is its extreme use of energy, requiring at least 20% of the body's energy overall to keep functioning. Additionally, the human brain requires sufficient nutrition and hydration. Any number of these issues can impair functioning to such a complex organ. To add to this, additional memory processing can only happen when paired with sleep. Sleep is a construct not totally understood by the rest of the galaxy. While certain species are known to generate phases of reduced consciousness similar to human meditation, they do not demonstrate the complete shutdown of conscious function that humans do. For the complete functioning of this apex predator, the brain requires at least eight hours of unconsciousness. In comparison to similar cortical structures, the process of sleep in humans is comparable to only one thing. Death in other species. The ship was quiet, terribly silent, with only the distant thrumming sound of the engines. It was an odd fact about human space life. Eight hours or more of a solar cycle, the humans lay silent and unmoving, completely unaware of the world around them, lying as if dead. Now, after nearly a year aboard the human ship, Krill had gotten used to the odd fact, though it never ceased to amaze and, of course, still slightly terrify him. The first time this had happened, he had been horrified out of his mind. Nearly a year ago, it was his first day aboard the human ship, and he had spent the last 12 hours at Captain Veer's side, taking a tour of the ship and getting to know the human crew. The humans had been terrifying, but they had also been friendly, smiling at him with their sharp white teeth and predatory eyes. They had introduced him to their odd greeting behaviors, which they called handshakes and high fives, to his additional surprise, the humans had wasted no time in making fun of their human counterpart for the loss of his eye, still bandaged and heavily monitored by Krill and the other medics aboard the ship. Instead of feeling insulted, the man had laughed and joined in, declaring himself a Cyclops, and adding another thing for Krill's increasing list of things to find out about. Interestingly, after a while, Krill had noticed an odd behavior among the humans, they were significantly slowing down. Their eyes drooped, and occasionally one of them would open their mouth wide, take a massive breath as they did so. A yawn by one of them would begin a chain reaction to multiple other humans in the vicinity. Eventually, the captain laid a hand on his arm. Well, Krill, that's the ship for you. Now go get some rest. If you have any questions, I'll be in my quarters. Following their captain's example, the rest of the crew slowly disbanded. The ship grew oddly quiet, and the humans had vanished. Krill wandered about the ship, marveling at the equally intricate structures and barbaric constructions employed by the humans. He had so many questions, and he was sure one of the humans would be willing to answer them. The problem was finding a human, as it seemed that there was no one aboard the ship. The lights were dimmed eerily, and there was no sound. Not the usual blabbering of humans echoing around, but the distant roar of the engines. Krill wandered around for some minutes, opening doors and peeking inside, but finding nothing. Eventually, he made his way towards the crew's quarters, peeping inside rooms and down hallways. One door opened before him into darkness with a quiet hiss. And what he saw there froze him in fear. An entire group of humans, flat on their backs, 
eyes closed, unmoving, and in various poses of distress. Some lay on their backs, others flat on their faces, all completely unmoving. Were they dead? Krill backed from the room, body thrumming with fear. What could have done this? What, what could have destroyed ten humans without so much as a fight or a scream? It, this couldn't be right. It, he rushed to the next door as fast as he could, sliding and open with another hiss, only to be caught by the same sight. Humans lying in the darkness, unmoving, mouths open, some of them leaking a clear fluid. Krill backed away again. This was terrible. Horrible! What, what could have gone wrong? He needed to tell the captain. He, he needed to warn someone. Turning, he deflated the hydrogen sack at his back, giving him greater mobility to scurry over the ground, down the hall and up the stairs to the captain's quarters. Even here, there were no sounds. He, he hurried down the hallway and towards the captain's door. There came the same hiss as the door folded inward, opening up into the darkening void. Oh, no. And there he lay. Curled up on his side, knees drawn to his chest, Krill would have guessed that his posture was defensive. His head was down, chin covering his neck. His knees were drawn up, blocking the exposed frontal organs. Had something attacked him? Killed him as he defended himself here in the dark? Clear fluid oozed from the corner of his lips, glittering dimly in the light. His body was only slightly colder than it had been before. He must have died recently. Krill took a tentative step forward into the room. It was just him now, and he had to figure out what happened. He stepped a little closer, foot knocking lightly into a boot, which was discarded on the floor, and the corpse jolted upwards. Krill let a shrill cry of horror. The corpse let off a similar yelp of surprise and leaped to his feet. A light flashed on somewhere. Krill staggered backwards, tripping over another boot and falling to the floor. The corpse lurched around for a moment, cursing and covering its eyes before saying, Krill! Oh, what the fuck is- what's going on? Krill tilted his head in confusion. Captain? No, the Easter Bunny! Yeah, it's- it's me! Oh. The human blinked a foggy green eye at him. What the hell are you doing? I- um... Krill stammered. The, the rest of the crew? I, I think they're dead! He was shaking heavily. The captain narrowed his eye in confusion. Dead? All of them? Were they still breathing? Krill shook his head. Well, uh, well they weren't moving. Uh, that I could see, and, and then their body temperatures were very low. Uh, the captain paused and sat back on the squishy bench with a subdued chuckle. <laughs> Krill, the crew is asleep. Asleep? He asked in confusion. The captain nodded. Yes, asleep. It's when we shut our bodies down to, like, preserve energy or something. It helps with learning and memory and it cleans things out. It also speeds up the healing process. He motioned to his recently lost eye. Very important if you want to avoid infection. And I need at least eight hours of it, so if you don't mind... Uh, sorry, Captain, Krill said while shuffling away awkwardly. The human waved, confusing him even more, as he returned to his supine position. It's all right, Krill. It never occurred to me that you guys didn't sleep. Everyone I know personally does it. After some more of these scary nights, as the human called it, weird, since there was no solar body which would cause such a cycle in a spaceship... Or was there? Krill would rather not want to visit Engineering and find out about their power source. With permission from the captain, Krill had been allowed to run some tests in order to observe this... sleep. Using advanced imaging techniques, Krill was able to recreate what the humans felt and saw during these times, while also monitoring their physiological functions. What he found was... terrifying. The captain closed his eye and grew very still. At first there was nothing, but after a few minutes the heart rate began to slow dramatically. It dropped from 80 to 70, then to 60. At 58, Krill panicked, waking the human with a sudden jolt and a curse. Human! Are you okay? He asked hesitantly. I won't be if you startle me like that again! 
Grail bashfully let him go back, holding himself back from waking the humans as his heart slowed again. His breathing grew shallow. The body temperature dropped. Brain waves grew long and slow as the human fell even further. He panicked again once the human's motor cortex locked up. When the human awoke this time, he was more disoriented than he had been before, groggy and bleary, demanding to know what was going on this time. You were dying! Krill screeched, not understanding what the human didn't understand about that. The human raised an eyebrow. Um, no? Krill nodded. He had only ever seen symptoms like that at the hospital right before death. First, the body shuts down consciousness, energy seeps out as heat, internal mechanisms begin to slow, the brain's functions grow confused and erratic, spaces that were once alive slow down, while others jolt to life in an attempt to keep the body working. Eventually, the motor strip is shut off to conserve energy. Those who have managed to come back from the brink report seeing terrible visions of reality and memory stitched together in terrible configurations. Krill's study on human sleep should proved to be revolutionary. The humans need death to survive. I, every night, when the lights dim and the ship quiets, the humans willingly and enthusiastically slip towards the void, taking their bodies and their minds to the very brink of death. Their body heat, their heart rate, and their breathing drop to unsustainable daytime levels. Their body goes stiff and unmoving as they are assailed with these pre-death visions. But do humans fear this? The answer is a resounding no. The humans revel in the nightly dance with the void. They willingly slip in and out, taunting the darkness for hours on end, even as their bodies draw energy from the blackness. Tell a human those things and they will laugh in your face. They know death on an intimate level, so much that they cannot fathom the similarities that we see. They do not just take joy in this nightly activity, but they need it. They pull their vitality directly from death itself. The longer a human goes without this nightly dance, the more they likely are to succumb completely to the void. We, the galactic community, knew humans were a death-formed species from a death world worshipping death and now we know why. The young spend the greatest time here, children and babies, while the elderly spend less time as if aware of their proximity to the blackness. The humans won't admit it, but there is proof of what we say. The hypnic jerk, as the humans coined it, describes the sudden violent wakefulness accompanied by an immense increase in body function and startle response. Some humans have gone so far as to suggest this is their cortical reaction to the brain confusing the process of falling asleep as dying. What the humans don't understand is just how right they are. Hey kid, you want another story? Yeah, I thought so. Well, don't you worry, you story lover you. We got another awesome story coming up right at you in just a sec. Krill had never actually met a human. Of course, he had heard about them. As a trauma doctor at the second largest medical facility in the Quadrant, they received many visitors, and their stories from far across the galaxy. The humans weren't a new topic of discussion. They had been around for a while and were slowly beginning to spread outward from their home world. Every day, more and more species were bringing stories of the strange race of predators. It used to be that the stories were told secondhand, a friend of a friend sort of thing, but more and more were coming in with supposed stories of personal encounters. While humans weren't a new topic of discussion, they were certainly becoming a popular one. Every week it seemed another visitor was bringing them in another thrilling story of the crazy death worlders. Krill doubted many of the stories. As a medical professional, he relied on hard science facts and was not one to be prone to flights of fancy. But one fateful solar cycle, he witnessed something that would change his opinion forever. It was a slow day. Most transports and stock ships had transferred out the day before taking crews and accidents along with them. Krill floated aimlessly through the halls, checking on patients and occasionally sending a memo to a colleague. All this was easily done with four independent limbs as well, as four separate cortical hemispheres. The lights in the building suddenly flashed red. 
Radio signals pulled against his lateral receptors, and as he turned to race down the hallway, the radio signals morphed into a voice. Doctor, we have an emergency SOS from the UNSC Stabby, requesting immediate medical assistance. The words used were unfamiliar to Krill as he took the next hallway at speed. Species? Scans indicated as a human freelance ship. If it weren't for his medical training, he might have stopped in shock. Repeat? Humans! It's humans! I'm sending the biological map now! The radio signals morphed, and the lateral cortical zone of his right posterior unit decoded the image. The shown human was an odd creature. Ten units tall, bipedal endoskeleton with two attached cortical hemispheres, heavily carbon-based, running by a circulatory pump and a complex set of smooth muscle tubes. With advanced medical training and four cortical hemispheres, he knew enough at the moment to perform most of any emergency medical operation necessary. Upon seeing the biomap, he was almost 100% sure those stories about these creatures he had heard had been false. It did not seem that special. Floating to a stop in the main medical unit, he waited with two supporting staff as they listened to the roar of the ship's engines approaching from the sky. Sanctum's rings! Those engines are loud! The doors ahead burst open and three of the creatures rushed in, pushing a fourth in a weird contraption Krill could best describe as a crude metal chair with wheels. Long waves of electromagnetic radiation indicated a burning red color, painting the front of the fourth creature. As a second thought, he quickly flipped on his universal translator. It's gonna be alright, Captain. You're gonna be fine, just don't move your head. Crow quickly noted the universal medical patch on the human's right upper limb. It must be an emergency if they were forced to bring him planet side. But blocked as he was, he could hardly see the fourth figure painted in slow waves, neck immobilized by a stiff foam collar. A figure beside was helping to hold the creature in an upright sitting position. Stopping in the center of the room, the two humans up front moved to make way. He had never seen a sight so gruesome. Or if he had, it had only been during a post-mortem examination. He hoped the humans were not capable of picking up the high-amplitude shrill he let off upon sight. The human male sat very still in the chair, head tilted slightly back. The origin of the red color was a liquid substance, which he now identified as human blood. It had dripped from the creature's right ocular socket around the edges of a sharp metal rod protruding from its center. Around him, the other humans were frantic, letting out terrified little wails as they looked on. A couple quick calculations. That was too severe. The rod would have pierced cortical tissue. The human should be dead, either through the wound or the following shock. He had to be. If medical school had taught him anything, it was that brain injury was impossible to survive. Quickly, Krill threw off his horror and moved forward, expecting to find the human circulatory pump non-functional. But a quick scan showed the organ to still be pumping, and doing so at a slow rate of 66 beats. How could this be? <laughs> hey, Doc. Krill nearly leaped from his skin as the human spoke, tight-lipped and very still, its other eye opening to roll towards him, blurry and out of focus. Another squeak of horror. Could you <clears throat> help me out here? I think I got something stuck in my frontal lobe. He suddenly didn't know what to do with his hands. What madness was this? Not, not only was the human not dead, but he was speaking? It's impossible! Captain, just please don't talk. The other human begged. Just listen to me for a sec. <clears throat> and stop freaking out. I'm the one with this damn thing sticking out of my brain. The group around him got quiet. Krill moved forward, although still shocked. His medical training took over and he started doing an albeit slow examination. Do you feel pain? He asked in shocked curiosity. The human's one good eye squinted, thoughtfully. Um, no. How can... The doctor looked at him. The human brain can shut off pain when needed. He will feel it more when the shock wears off, came the answer from the medical human. You can shut off pain? Thank the Lord. My eyeless human muttered quietly. How did- How did I get an accidental lobotomy? What's a lobotomy? Um, we'll talk about this later. Do you mind taking this thing out of my head first? Turns out Krill would have rather not known what a lobotomy was. Barbaric humans! But still, he was fascinated. Never had he met a species that was capable of surviving brain injury of any kind, and surely not to this magnitude. 
Any other species other than a human would have perished in an instant. The shock of such trauma alone would have been enough to kill. But instead, the human's brain had shut down the pain and calmed the human even despite the damage. After treating the wound, Krill had performed a complex surgery to remove the object. The amount of brain damage would have been extensive in any other species, but their ship's medics seemed relieved upon seeing the images. The eye socket had been broken. The eye itself had been mutilated beyond repair. But that didn't seem to bother the human. As Krill found out after more observations, it was already functioning with a robotic leg and had scars seemingly following his nerve system and subdermal skeleton on the outside of his skin, with the bulk of it being around his spine. As to where these scars came from, neither of the humans could give him an answer, and the captain certainly would not give him one, looking away seemingly troubled and babbling quietly about military secrets and things he'd rather not dig up yet. Who would have thought these stories were true? Who would have thought I'd be shipping off with a group of humans the next week? Certainly not him. Not yet. Though the human's physical properties started to spark a great interest he would look more into. Who would have thought the ability of a human to survive traumatic brain injury? Who would have thought humans can just decide not to feel pain? I what more can these durable bipeds endure if missing a leg was just a casual thing for them? After all, even their ship, the UNSC Stabby, was named after stabbing. The act of putting a sharp object where it doesn't belong. In a body, Krell figured. He wanted to later ask one of the humans about it. He really couldn't imagine what other murderous things such a race could endure or do. Hey, don't click away. We got another awesome story coming up right now in a sec, and you certainly don't want to miss it. Taken from the Drev Chronicles of the Elders about the deadly Galactic Assembly versus Drev War. We should have never started a war against the Galactic Assembly. We thought our superior strength and weaponry would give us a tactical advantage against our enemies. And maybe, if we had gone through with our plan only 20 cycles previously, we may have been right. But then the Galactic Assembly had something we did not. Humans. We had only heard stories about them, originating from a single planet around the main sequence star in an exceptionally average solar system. Compared to us Drev, the humans were nothing. They were soft and breakable with thin endoskeletons and a skin thin enough to puncture with ease. They were bipedal with two additional limbs, not particularly strong like we were, or smart like those tiny Vrull. Their weapons were fine enough, we gave them that. But even with the help of their supposed death world species, we were sure to win. We, the Drev... We were truly indestructible. Ten feet tall, six limbs, and an exoskeleton which required armored piercing weaponry. When the Galactic Assembly threatened to send human units, we laughed. For we truly understood war like no other race before us. We were raised in war, shaped by war, and we died in the glory of war. <laughs> no, did we die. But we were not wrong. Not at first. We cut through the humans. We parted them like a fleshy wave. We spilled their fluids on the ground until the valleys ran red with their blood, and their cries boiled into the sky. Sure, they were a worthy foe. They had tactics, and they had bravery, and their weapons were damaging, but they were not as strong as we were. But then, they came back, and they were stronger. They didn't die. We tore their limbs from their bodies and their organs from their insides. We painted the rocks with their blood and saturated the sky with their screams. But they just did not die. I remember seeing the first creature walking up their eyes. He marched with the sound of clattering metal and his eyes burned with a false light. We tried to destroy him, but his body would not break. What once would have been torn into bits by us now deflected our weaponry. 
bodies, which were once so weak we could rip them apart with just two of our arms, our backs that once only took a leg to break were now so durable that we could do nothing. Limbs of flesh had been built with steel and titanium. Oh, we didn't kill them. We gave them permission to evolve. In other wars, we had known that removing a limb was enough to remove a soldier from the battle, but this, the, this was new. This was horror. The humans were not crippled, deserving death. They were improved, and we led the way for them to do so. They did not die. They replaced their limbs with iron, stronger and faster. When their eyes were gone, they replaced them with thermal, infrared, and ultraviolet. They wired targeting systems directly into their brains. When their ears were gone, they replaced those too. When their hearts failed, they pumped their blood with machines. When their lungs deflated, they created bags for that too. Feet gone, they replaced them with rockets. <laughs> No species from our side of the galaxy had ever stood against us. But these, they took their defeat and adapted. Never had any race thought to mesh flesh with machine. It was preposterous. It, it was insane. But they did it. They wired electrical impulses into their own nerves. They ripped themselves open and replaced what was inside. They unmade their humanity and still remained human. We couldn't understand it. And now, in turn, they swept through us like a wave. They took us to our knees, then to our graves. We had only one option left. An option never before taken by the Drev. We surrendered. I remember the moment on my knees before that creature. One leg, no arm, no eyes, staring into my soul. And then he offered me his hand and smiled. Here was a creature we had ripped apart until he was barely flesh, but he still smiled and said, You guys are some tough bastards, you know that? Honestly, we didn't know anything about tough. <laughs>